To start this video, we will finish up our discussion on pH regulation in the kidney by talking about titratable acid and direct ammonium production in extreme acidosis. The rest of the video after that, we will talk about salt and water balance. Titratable acid is the hydrogen excreted in the urine in combination with phosphate and other organic buffers, mostly phosphate under normal conditions, and free hydrogen. Titratable acid does not include hydrogen lost as ammonium because the pK for this buffer system is 9.2, and titration to a pH of 7.4 will not remove hydrogen from ammonium. Titratable acid is determined by gradually adding NaOH to a urine sample until the pH equals 7.4. The amount of NaOH added is equal to the titratable acid. Net acid excretion is the total acid excreted by the kidney. Net acid excretion equals ammonium excretion plus urinary titratable acid minus bicarbonate excretion. Like I mentioned earlier, when acidosis is extreme and long-lasting, another mechanism is activated to synthesize more bicarbonate. This involves the metabolism of the amino acid glutamine in the cells of the proximal tubule, thick loop of Henle, and distal tubule. This process generates two new bicarbonates for each glutamine metabolized. Now we will move into our discussion on salt and water balance. The osmolarity of the urine changes as it travels through the nephron, depending on the permeability of the tubule. In the proximal tubule, the fluid is isoosmotic, then it becomes hyperosmotic for a time in the loop of Henle, after which it becomes hypoosmotic because of the active transport of the solute out of the tubule into the interstitial fluid. The osmolarity in the collecting duct isn't consistent and changes depending on the body's need. Taking a closer look at the collecting duct, we see that the permeability of the collecting duct depends on the volume of urine present. When there is a low urine volume, there is a high level of vasopressin. Remember that vasopressin is also called antidiuretic hormone and is responsible for increasing water permeability in the kidney. Therefore, water can flow freely out of the collecting duct back into the bloodstream and the urine becomes very concentrated. When there is a large urine vo volume, vasopressin is not released and the water stays in the collecting duct to be excreted from the body. We will consider the problem associated with a sudden increase in body fluid due to drinking one liter of water. Under these conditions, the kidney will greatly increase urine flow from one milliliter per minute to six milliliters per minute and decreases urine osmolarity to about 50 milliosmoles. Therefore, only a small excess of solute is lost in the urine, whereas water loss in the urine is increased by six times. Here is a chart that you can study as a review of the renin-angiotensin pathway, which helps to regulate water and salt concentrations. Angiotensinogen is always being produced by the liver. When renin is present due to low blood pressure, the rest of this pathway is stimulated, leading to increased vasopressin, thirst, and sodium reabsorption. This helps the body to increase internal fluids. Here is a big picture look at this interaction of volume and osmolarity. You are welcome to pause the video and take a closer look. To end, I am going to talk about the glomerular filtration rate, or GFR, in clearance calculations. The GFR is the amount of a substance filtered at the glomerulus, and the plasma clearance is the measure of the rate of a substance that is cleared from the plasma by the kidney. We will use inulin as an example for our calculations because it is a substance that is neither reabsorbed or secreted in the kidney. It just stays in the tubule. The clearance of a substance X is calculated by taking the excretion rate of a substance, how much of it is leaving the body, and dividing it by the concentration of the substance in the plasma. Remember that excretion rate is the volume of the urine multiplied by the concentration of the substance in the urine. Another way to calculate excretion rate is the filtered load, which is the GFR times the concentration of the substance in the plasma minus the amount reabsorbed plus the amount secreted. In our example using inulin, we could easily calculate its GFR because it is neither reabsorbed or secreted. Therefore, excretion rate would be equal to the filtered load, and GFR would be equal the excretion rate divided by the concentration of inulin in the plasma. Notice that this is the same equation as the clearance equation, so GFR for inulin is the same as the plasma clearance.